And I don't think there was even a, a shred of evidence to overturn that call anyhow. So we stay with the ball at the 47 yard line and a new set of downs for Southern Mississippi. So Griggs 56 percent passer. What I love here Ahmad is 15 touchdowns and only two interceptions on the year. Very smart young quarterback does a good job also operating out of the run pass options. He'll sling it sidearm here to Edo Smith, 45, 43, 42 yard line. And you saw the elusiveness there of Smith again, a five, second and five coming up. Yeah, I love the fact that they're trying to find different ways to get Edo Smith the ball. If you're the Florida State defense, your ability to defend this offense starts and stops with Edo Smith, the running back. You've got to know where he's at at all times and account for him. Whether he's being released out in the flat from the backfield on a passing route or running the football. Delayed handoff, Smith. He'll get a first down and a lot more to the 25 20. The race is on 15 10, inside the 10, and a touchdown saving tackle there down to the nine yard line. Just, 33 yards. Just right up the gut. A delay here, which allowed him to see that scene, get through it. And here's where this kid is so special. Complete back with home run speed. And they'll give it to him again. Look at the ability to move quickly in a crowd. Down to the six yard line. They may even say the five yard line. And that, Dave, that's one of the best things about Edo Smith. It seems like every time he touches the ball, he makes the first man miss. And as, you're, as a running back, that's your number one job. Make the first guy miss because there's always someone unaccounted for. Second down and goal from the five yard line. 50% touchdowns for Southern Miss in red zone. This is a very good red zone defense for the Knowles. Riggs, a lot of pressure there. He'll get it to Smith, but they're waiting for him. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Jacob Pugh making the tackle. And Dave, you alluded to that red zone success. Southern Miss, with Griggs on the football field, is stronger when he's a starter. 16 touchdowns, 25 possessions. Compare that when he doesn't start, five touchdowns, 17 possessions. He changes the way his team plays down here because of his ability to run the RPO system and threat teams with his feet. Third and goal, plenty of time. Griggs has some room to run to the left. It's the foot race. Can he beat Burns to the end zone? Touchdown, USM. Well, there's one of the better foot races we'll watch today. Brian Burns and Quadre Griggs both racing for that pylon. And let's see if he did indeed get in. Looks pretty clear to me, but right on cue. Briggs breaking the pocket, utilizing his creativity for what appears to be the first score of the ball game. And they brought out the swinging gate, then closed it. And they've got an excellent kicker in Parker Seanfield. First team, all conference USA, also all academic in conference USA. So the big personal foul penalty changed this drive instead of a punt but the PAT by the way was missed just for the second time in his career but the personal foul penalty kept the drive alive and Padre Griggs took full advantage and just eludes a defender to the end zone. But this is going to be a real test. We, uh, top of the show, we talked about the focus for Florida State. They commit two 15-yard personal foul penalties on special teams. And again, the ball goes down. Breeze has picked up a little bit. And again, it's at the back of the kicker, up to as much as 13 miles an hour. So Bourgeois now is going to need a holder. And it's going to feel a little cooler out there. The temperature right around 40 degrees. Get an idea. That is behind Bourgeois right now. So Curtis Michael will have to be the holder, and we'll see if that affects the kick. Not too bad. Taken here by Rasul. He'll take a knee, and it'll be a touchback 25 yard line. So here is James Blackman. He didn't begin the season as the number one quarterback, but took over in the Alabama game. He is actually the number one true freshman passer in Florida State history. You got to go back to Chip Ferguson in 1985. That's who Blackman surpassed this year out of Belle Glade, Florida. 
you see the, the talent and the potential when you watch this young man. You also see the fact that he's a freshman quarterback, the highs and the lows of the season. One thing that I really like is his running ability, uh, but this is a young man that also is learning how to make the NFL throws that I think are necessary for him to win this job next year. He's got two great backs right next to him and a pre-snap penalty coming up. Might have been the right tackle, Rick Leonard, who was a little early. False start, number 76. Offense, five-yard penalty remains first down. And now 15. I was about to say, in the backfield, he's got a couple of studs with him here as we take a look at the mistake. And here's where having some of your leaders from your team not participate in this game could really affect you because when this starts to happen, you've got to have an older guy, more experienced player, one of your captains, pull the team aside and say, we've got to calm our nerves because right now we're shooting ourselves in the foot. And before we get another snap or any snap, we're going to have another penalty. This one might be on USM, however. Draper Offside by contact, number nine, defense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. So we go right back to first and ten, where we started. So a different formation for the Seminoles. Jacques Patrick. Outstanding junior running back number nine and he'll get it and he'll have a hole and Patrick a punishing powerful runner will get eight almost nine in fact it will be nine to the 34 second of the yard coming up. Yeah, he's the type of player that keeps defensive backs linebackers up at night the day before the game against him at, at, with his pure size. It's almost impossible to bang with him 10 to 12 times a game and to not feel that. So I'm looking to see how he wears down this Golden Eagles defense today with his pure frame and his running style. So Jack West Patrick checks out number three Cam Akers a different style of running back and he's only a freshman has come in. Absolutely. He'll get it. And he might get the first down but that is all he's going to get bent back by the Southern Miss defense at the bottom there. Looked like Yancey number 22 in there on the stop. Let's get to some impact players here from Ahmad today for this game. Yeah, let me start with that freshman running back Cam Akers. He can make multiple defenders miss. And also Jock West Patrick as we talked about the big powerful running back and on the defensive side watch for the young freshman number 41 Rakeem Booth. This young man can make plays. He's very versatile and last but not least the free safety Tavarius Moore quick to diagnose plays and make things happen. Blackman stepping in, pocket throws long as the catch made inbounds. No. And Florida State, as Auden Tate tried to make the grab, is missing Nyquan Murray, a late scratch. The junior from Orlando had 40 catches and four touchdowns on the season, but he is not available today for James Blackman. And I think that's a major hit to this offense. One of the more dynamic playmakers in the ACC. And Murray is one of those types of players that is your home run threat and also can stretch the defense with his speed. Ruling on the field was an incomplete pass. Previous play is under review. And the booth wants a uh, look for, see whether he was inbounds or out of bounds. The call on the field is incomplete. From our distance, it looked like he was out of bounds, but we're going to find out and uh, take a much closer look. And I think the call in the field is going to stand. This should be fairly quick. Outstanding effort. And Blackman perhaps had enough room over there to get that ball in a small and tight window. Just a tad bit off of his target. And you see a little of the tires kick up. And again, the referee with the headset off very quickly. After review, the ruling of an incomplete pass stands. So second down and 10 coming up. Seminoles with their first possession at the 35-yard line. A great effort there by Tate. Tremendous concentration, but just could not handle the pass. And again, thrown into the wind, too, could be a little bit of a problem. And if you're a Southern Miss on defense, you want to try to adjust to the many formations and the various looks that Florida State gives you as of now they they bring Blackman under center they do they will do that all game long they do two tight ends as well but Southern Miss equal to the task no gain on the play at all for Jacquez Patrick 
And there goes Rakeem Booth. This young man has a nose for the football. Bright, young, strong side linebacker at six foot, 210 pounds. He'll grow into that frame some more, but currently still a force. And now with a third and long situation, this is where you have to hand the ball over in the offense to your young quarterback, Blackman, and hope he makes a wise decision. Wow, we have a timeout. We have had a ton of whistles in this game, Southern and we're only at the 926 They're mark. First. The Golden Eagles are going to call a timeout. It will also be a media timeout. So we will step aside here and find out what the call is for Florida State and a skeleton coaching staff. They don't even have a full staff for this game. The young people there really appreciated that. You will appreciate our keys to the game brought to you by Franklin American Mortgage Company. What do you got? For Florida State, offensively, they got to secure the line of scrimmage, must protect their quarterback, create running lanes. Defensively for the Seminoles, dominant run defense, persistently defend quarter, I mean running back Smith and quarterback Griggs. And for Southern Miss, establish playmakers early, which they have done. And defensively, they want to pressure the quarterback back and change the post snap picture this young freshman quarterback is seeing on defense. So third down and 10 from the 35 yard line USM burned one of their timeouts they have two remaining in this half. Jack West Patrick is the tailback number nine. Four-man rush, Blackman long throw, caught 45-yard line, first down, Tate this time well in bounds, made the catch, cut down by number 21, Rashawn Mitchell. First and 10, Seminoles. That's a big-time throw for James Blackman. He throws it from the opposite hash to the out. That's what NFL scouts are looking for. The timing wasn't great, but the location of that pass was on the money, and Tate at 6'5", 225 pounds. Boy, is this kid a major target for the Seminoles. Now the, the student body left with Patrick, but USM equal to the task, and you can see celebrating that tackle. Number three, Cornell Armstrong, a senior cornerback with a stop. And that's how you've got to attack Patrick. You, you've got to cut those, those trees down, those legs, <laughs> those trunks. Because if you don't and he gets going and he can generate some power from those legs, it's going to be a long day and a lot of jerseys laying on the ground that are yellow. Roddy, we got to meet him yesterday. Has your hand recovered yet from the handshake you got from Jack West Patrick? <laughs> Yeah, Jocko is Patrick. Uh, he, he about broke my hand with the handshake. The guy's <laughs> built like a defensive end. Uh, he's six foot three. He's listed at what two thirty, but I, I don't know, guys. He, he could pack two fifty on that frame and still run like he is. A, a, as a smaller running back, you look at guys like that and you just say, man, uh, we all were not created equal. He is a physical specimen. And I got to think, guys, that we're talking about somebody at six three, two thirty, on a talent laden team that's got a potential to play at the next level. 100%. He's out of the game. Cam Akers is in. Blackman down the seam. Receiver open and is broken up in the last second at the 15 yard line. Gavin was the intended receiver. And on the drive again, another play made by Armstrong. I've got to say that I, I think that ball was thrown in a very safe location by Blackman. He saw the one on one coverage that you'll see here. The right side of your screen coming across to the middle. And if you're Keith Gavin, you've got to bring this ball in at 6'3", 221 pounds. Use that big frame, block out that defensive back, and go make that play. But give Cornell Armstrong credit. The vocal leader of this defense stepping up and making a timely play for the Golden Eagles. That should be five yards in the Seminoles column. As Darian Yancey was just a touch anxious. Pushing back the center, Alec Eberly. Offside by contact, number 22, defense. Five yard county remains third down. And all of a sudden, a much more reasonable third down and six. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It changes what they do, and especially considering you have a dual threat quarterback in Blackman. Zone read, run pass options are 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 ideal for these situations because you really run in three plays and now you tell your quarterback to get you in the best one as Florida State is trying to convert on this third down. Yeah. 
Another offside coming up. Free play and a horrible snap. So Akers falls on it at the 25-yard line. This is going to be really painful for USM because it certainly appeared the right end was offsides. They lost 25. It looks like it's going to be erased. Offside. Defense. Number 99. Five-yard penalty remains. Third down. Turner was the player offsides. Finally, a break goes the Seminoles' way. He almost got back. It's still third down. We've gone from third and 11 to third and one. They brought number nine, Patrick, back in at the tailback position. And it looks like they're going to line up in center. I would fully expect Patrick to get the carry here. Maybe even a sneak since Blackman is 6'5". It is Patrick. And, oh, look at the strength carrying defenders to the 43 and a first down. He was hit by Riley at the line of scrimmage, and it is still a first down. Yeah, this guy is a second effort type tailback, and Alec Eberly praised him right in front of us yesterday with Patrick in the room. He said, Coach Trickett, our offensive line coach, loves this guy because initial contact does not bring him down, and he plays with the same aggression that an offensive lineman is supposed to. Rick Trickett, one of the real legends of this game as, an, as a line coach. Blackman, now out in space. This is Patrick, makes one man miss. There is a penalty marker down at the 40-yard line. Gain is about four. Let's see what this flag is all about. We've had a lot of them in this first quarter. I think we're going to get another offsides call. Offside. Defense number nine. Five yard penalty. Replay. First down. That's Riley hit again, the sophomore from Harvey, Louisiana. And this, the referee didn't say by contact this time. And you see why. So another five-yard penalty, first and five. Akers is the tailback this time. They'll hand it to him. Oh, he's got a hole. Tell you what, USM, it looked like that play Ahmad was going to bust. And I give the Golden Eagles defense credit because Paxton Scrimshaw, number 30, and number seven, Jomez Applewhite, closed that in a hurry. Oh, they swarm. There's one thing you won't say about this defense. Uh, they get after you and they play extreme team defense and they're going to have to today to tackle these backs whether it's acres who can make multiple defenders miss or whether it's patrick who can just run right through you they've got to use team defense to combat the versatility of the backfield for the seminoles blackman had plenty of time pass caught by number 89 keith gavin gavin made the first man miss and down to the 24 yard line another fsu first down those easy throws for Blackman can really get him settled in and feeling good about himself. And that's when you can take those shots downfield. Excellent run after the catch for Keith Gavin. Nice little stutter step. Stop on the sideline on a dime and pick up some extra yardage. Part of the three-game win streak for USM. They have kept opponents out of the end zone in the first quarter in the last three games. Blackman going to take off here. Ooh. Hard hit at the 20 yard line as he turned. He was not sliding. Rakeem Booth, number 41, hit him high, and Kelsey Douglas also had his arms around him. Now that play was defended brilliantly. Watch the pop here on the end of this play. You don't want your quarterback taking these types of shots. There wasn't anything oh dirty about it either. 12th play of the drive coming up. And, and, and guys, James Blackman is listed at 6'5", but only 169 pounds. Yikes. You, not only is he a quarterback, but he's pretty slight. Hasn't quite filled into that weight room program yet. As the time, receiver open, caught, touchdown. Seminoles on and Tate. Tate, his eighth touchdown catch of the season. Outstanding touch and timing from the young quarterback as you get the ISO here on Tate. Beats the jam, releases perfectly, secures the catch. 
And that's 6'5", 225. I'm not sure you could have knocked that ball or jarred it loose anyhow had you been the Golden Eagles defender. And Florida State now up 7'6". Yep, and the difference in this game so far, Ahmad, a missed extra points. Plenty of time to provide by the Seminole offensive line and Blackman and Tate do the rest. Tate. So both touchdown drives have been impacted by mistakes by the defense. You had personal foul penalties, actually a special teams personal foul penalty that allowed the Golden Eagles to keep going. And then you had the big break for Florida State and they both have cashed in. The difference, a missed PAT. Into the win, and you can see the breeze affecting that. Smith comes up, makes a tough catch at the 15, and look at Smith go here to the 38-yard line. That's a 24-25 yard return. Tyler on the stop. And we'll take a look now at our impact players, and we just saw one of them. Yeah, Edo Smith, he's a complete back. I love the fact that he's returning kicks and putting that on film for the NFL. And the wide receiver, number 18, Corey Robertson. A competitive nature, NFL measurables allows him to play at a high level. And defensively for Florida State, cornerback number four, Tavares McFadden, aggressive, strong, and talented quarterback um, that has the potential to be a lockdown player. And then last but not least, the sophomore defensive end, Brian Burns, who's already gotten on the stat sheet. He diagnosed and reacts to plays extremely well in the run and the pass. Fake one way, throw the other, and man, that was read by the Seminole defense. I don't even know how the catch was made by Corey Robertson, and maybe a yard on the play. Seminoles diagnosed this perfectly. That's a great coverage, you know, and this is what you have to do if you're McFadden. You've got to hug on to that wide receiver, and the minute you see him coming back in, you've got to run that route for him. And right on cue, as we talked about McFadden, he comes out and makes an outstanding play on a wide receiver screen. And he was rumored to not be playing in this game. We'll talk about that here in a second, as that's a beautiful throw. McFadden on the coverage, the catch by Robertson into Seminole territory at the 47, a gain of a dozen. There are Florida State players, Ahmad, as you well know, who are not here, most notably Derwin James, also Matthew Thomas, and Josh Sweat, all choosing to issue the bowl game to focus on their NFL. Fell hopes. Tez Parks on the carry. He's in big trouble and he will lose yards. Back to the 49, a loss of four, second and 14 coming up. And there's 99 again. Brian Burns speaking to people who may well have an NFL future. Uh, there's no doubt from what I've been able to see on film, it appears though maybe these guys got caught on what? each other's helmets or something. Well, hopefully nobody's injured on the play. Yeah, it looked like their face mask got caught up. But Burns, I mean, Boy, at, at 6'5", 227 pounds, they really like this kid. His ability not only to defend against the run, despite not being the weight they'd like him to be, but he can also drop back in coverage and is very comfortable doing so. And you saw him there track down a running back. Just goes to show you his athletic ability. Quarterback draw. Griggs. Playing off a beautiful block, and Griggs puts his helmet down and gets to the 43 to get nine. And that's going to be an interesting third down, about six coming up. I, I think that's the most important part today of this Southern Miss offense. His ability to extend plays when things break down in the back end um, with his wide receivers or pass catches ability to be able to create separation, make something happen with your feet, Griggs. And right now, that's his strength, and so I think he needs to stick to it it's really going to be something that this offense will rely on today to have success versus the Seminoles. And, and Ahmad, that's where Florida State misses Derwin James. He was the guy on these third down packages that would roll down and kind of play middle linebacker and spy the quarterback. Great point, Roddy. Big pressure here from the Knowles. The slant pattern broken up. Would have been short of the first down anyway. Adams was the intended receiver. And look who broke it up. Burns was in the neighborhood, but that was Nate Andrews, number 29. That's the first miss for Griggs today. And it wasn't thrown in the right location, uh, but I think the wide receiver could have given perhaps a better effort. And Florida State bowing their back up here and forcing a punt and giving it back to this offense that is coming off of a scoring drive. Well, the last time we had a punt, we had a penalty. This time, Florida State sort of rushes one. 
fair catch signal made by Matthews. This will go into the end zone, a touchback to the 20 yard line. Bowl Mania rolling on today with a couple of more games. Following us on ESPN at 515 Eastern, Iowa will take on Boston College in the new era pinstripe bowl at Yankee Stadium. And at 9 Eastern, Big 12 rivals. I love this in the Academy Sports and Outdoors Texas Bowl, Missouri and Texas. Both games, of course, are available on the ESPN app. Missouri had an awful start to their season and Texas have been up and down all year but Drew Locke was probably the hottest quarterback in the SEC at the end of the year and then on the opposite side you've got the Texas Longhorns who are trying to find out who's the guy is it Shane Bushell the sophomore or is it the young freshman um, Ellinger Sam Ellinger who is going to be the guy moving forward and I think this game today will go a long way in determining that in, in offseason training and for spring ball. I think that's a sneaky good game right there, those two teams. Very even matchup. Jack Patrick trying to find some room, and I tell you what, USM has been tough on run defense. They give up 132 per game, and a gain of two there. Sangster among the tacklers, number 26. In fact, the Southern Miss defense, 17th in the nation in total defense. It's a good unit. Blackman down the middle of the field. There's the tight end, Izzo, with a catch. Oh, man, did he get hit. He was, that's just something he's kind of ran into. He was stood up. And number five, Walden Davis, a redshirt junior, finished him off. But Izzo will get the first down on his 15th catch of the year, one he won't easily forget. Yeah, and then Davis misses on the first part of it in the second effort. He comes back. You see him there, the miss. Watch him get up off of the turf and come back and bring the wood. What a great effort there from Izzo to pick up the first down and keep the chains moving. A perfect tackle by Davis. They're going to screen it out here to Akers, and it was well read, but Akers made the defenders miss, makes another one miss, and what could have been a loss or maybe no gain is a five-yard gain for Florida State on the ability of the freshman Cam Akers. And this is where he's special right here. His elusiveness stands out when you watch film. This should have been a tackle for loss, no doubt about it. They even had numbers to the ball, but his shiftiness and his ability to get out of tackles and his vision this young man is going to be special for sure for the Seminoles moving forward. Coming up to the one minute mark, I want to remind everybody we're going to be hearing from Willie Taggart in our booth. He will join Ahmad and I in the second quarter as Akers gets the first down to the 45 yard line. Apple White on the stop. So we'll get Willie Taggart's vision for this Florida State team. And this offense will significantly change mm -hmm. under Willie Taggart. And for those of you that are wondering if any changes have been implemented this week, they have not. Willie Taggart has just been on the sideline. He's been evaluating players, trying to pull guys off one on one and really determine the state of this program and also recruit as well. But um, this offense will look very different headed into 2018. But the defensive line won't as Odell Hagens is going to stay around for more years for the Garnet and Gold down to 17 seconds a six yard pickup there and that is pretty sure that is going to be the final play of the quarter as a matter of fact Florida State showing no interest in snapping that will be the end of one the Seminoles on the move seven to six an eventful first quarter Southern Miss gets a touchdown but can't convert to PAT if Lyo made his for Florida State and the Knowles in front looking for a seventh win and trying to avoid a losing season. It has been decades since Florida State has had one and from the stretch win three in a row to become a bowl eligible for a 36th straight year. Well represented though by the folks from Tallahassee made it over. We start the quarter second down and four. Yeah, and I don't see how those offensive numbers are going to change. Uh, how they won't change with Willie Taggart taking the helm. Now, you're not just saying that because he's standing <laughs> in between us, right? On second and four, Blackman, deep drop. He'll throw out on the flat. Catch made by Patrick. Makes the first defender miss. Makes another one miss. Makes a third miss. And he's finally dragged down out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Now, listen, I, I played at the University of Texas, and one of the goats there is Earl Campbell. I'm not putting him in the Earl Careful. Campbell category, Dave. All I'm saying is... Trying to tackle this guy who's busting out of the seams is 
you've got to bring everything you've got. You've got to bring your big boy pads. Patrick, one of the more difficult runners in all of college football to drag down, and once again showing that as he makes three miss for the Golden Eagles. I don't think he has the thighs. That he does. I can't even imagine you know, right. how that guy ever fit into a pair of pants <laughs> yeah, right. without ripping him or anything. <laughs> Down the middle of the field, catch made and a big hit, just shy of the five-yard line. Tate with another great grab. Armstrong defended him. Moore is the one who hit him high and hard, but no flag. And the first down for the Knowles is a seven-yard line. Yeah, if you want to be the man in your Tate, this is what you got to do: catch balls in traffic. You've got this big, large frame. Utilize it at 6'5", 225 pounds. Blackman here puts a dart right in there, and, and he saw the pressure coming, saw the contact, did not avoid the hit, hauls in the catch. Tate with already some big catches today, looking to make a name for himself. Flags are all over the place. Seen a few of these today. Looks like we're going to get procedure against Florida State, who have scored in their last 21 red zone opportunities consecutively. Number six, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. And 18 of the last 19 for scores. That's Trey McKitty, who's moved up the depth chart as a reserve tight end. He will check out after that mistake, and they also take Izzo out of the game, so a different look here for Florida State, back now first and goal at the 12. Yeah, those, those yards change how you call plays here, especially in the red zone when you've got that 12th defender which is the back line. But also remember, here's where Blackman really makes this team special because of his running abilities in the red zone. And there he goes, right on cue. Inside the five, down to the four yard line. That's a solid pickup. Booth in there on the stop, number 41. They're going to say his knee touched at the five, so it'll be second and goal from there. Yeah, the designed quarterback run. Blackman really showing the stronger part of his skill set, and he's at with that large frame, he still does a very good job of, of maneuvering his body and his frame to get through tight creases and, and despite being taller, runs a little bit lower than you would expect a guy that big, limiting the target that you can hit. They bring in the bulk now. The two tight end formation is back. Patrick flagged down behind the play at the six-yard line. The center judge threw that one and quickly. Yep, holding call against Florida State. That's already for Florida State. Holding, holding. Number 54, offense. Their fourth Ten penalty. Yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, second down. That's the center, the redshirt junior, Alec Eberly. And we'll get a look here, but. You know, Florida State with some costly penalties. It started off early on in the game, defensively giving up two to extend a drive where Southern Miss scored. Coming back here, and you need these yards down here in the red zone if you want to punch one in. So we go back second and goal, but now we're at the 15-yard line. Tight ends come out. Now we're going to have an offsides call. Free play here for Blackman. And there's no defender for Akers. He'll walk into the end zone. Touchdown. Let's make sure it's an offsides call. Offside, number nine, defense. Penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. So more red zone success for the Garnet and Gold. And that is 22 consecutive red zone ch chances and they've scored on 22 in a row great job of slipping acres out into the flat this is a bust defensively that's a guy that you don't want to lose track of and for the golden eagles they do and it cost them giving up a touchdown oh and a doink on the pat so we have had two point after touchdowns from very reliable kickers missed the goalpost and the never loses these battles as Chris Berman would say doink <laughs> and very much uh, a part of the great city of Shreveport take a look at Florida State leading 13 to 6 we've had both teams now missing PATs I mean we're not talking about bad turf here or grass or anything like that uh, it's just uh, little little mistakes made by the kickers. 
turf here is field turf. It's in great shape. And kickoff drifting toward the goal line. Caught at the one by Tez Parks. And Parks had to hesitate. And man, hesitating on a KOR is rough. He won't even get to the 20 yard line. The ESPN app is your best friend as a fan. You can stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live or wherever you may be. You'll get access to scores, news, and highlights of all the bowl games, and you can download the app to start streaming right now. If you got some place to be today, when you're returning all the Christmas gifts you didn't like, you take the app with <laughs> us, watch the Walk-On's Independence Bowl, and see if Quadre Griggs can get a score back for Southern Miss. And these are critical moments for a young quarterback, especially when things start off well for you. Now you're trying to get back into your groove and find your rhythm. Um, short throws, maybe even uh, allowing him to utilize his feet is an another way to get him going. They go on the ground and outside the 20 to the 23 yard line. It's Edo Smith, the multi purpose back, the all time total yardage leader in USM history. They've had some outstanding players come through southern Mississippi. And Ito, yes, if you're an O.J. Simpson trial person, as Roddy mentioned at the start of the show, Ito, he was named. That's not his, on his birth certificate, but that was the nickname he was given as a baby. He's in motion there. They fake the jet sweep, and Griggs goes the other way. He'll get to the 30, and he is embraced by Tavares McFadden and dragged down at the 31-yard line, but it's still going to be a first down. Big collision here, and as I alluded to it, making sure you get him started with his feet. That time there, the defensive back, McFadden, not expecting the quarterback to lower that shoulder, and he did. And Griggs, 6'3, 225 pounds, he's packing a punch. He's averaging almost eight yards per carry on three tries. Has some time here, can't find an open man now down the middle in the double. Oh, look at the receiver! Dropped and it's going to be ruled incomplete. Quez Watkins had his hands on it. He did a remarkable job to find the ball, but ultimately he could not hang on. It's second down. I'm glad you talked about his spotting ability when the ball was in the air because this ball was underthrown. He had to come back. And the defensive backs for Florida State, particularly Nate Andrews, who's coming underneath to provide underneath coverage, just overruns it. And a great adjustment there to come back to the ball. Just couldn't finish the catch. Wes Watkins missed an opportunity for a big throw. It was Kyle Myers who ended up breaking up the play. So they go back to Smith. That's always a smart call. He'll get solidly five yards there. Sets up third down and five. By the way, Smith in FBS. Over 4,000 yards on the ground and over 1,400 yards as a receiver. That puts him 10th all time. That's how good he has been. That's impressive. Adams in motion. Quick throw. Too high. McFadden in coverage that time. And depending on who you're rooting for, that was either a great defensive play or pass interference. And this is where McFadden excels. He's very aggressive. He's assertive on the edge. He likes to press. He loves the challenge of locking people up one on one. Very aggressive play that end in his favor. So Zach Everett will be back. Now, this is the first time that he has had to punt into this wind, which is about 10 to 15 miles an hour at times. And DJ Matthews is back deep. A little pressure coming this time. The rugby kick comes out low with a lot of spin. And Matthews with a smart play there to hustle up to grab that at the 30-yard line. That could still be rolling if he doesn't do that. We promise you a chance with new Florida State head coach Willie Taggart. He'll be joining him on and I in the booth here at the Walk-Ons Independence Bowl when we come back. So Willie Taggart 
as a head coach of Western Kentucky, got that program really going before he left to go to Tampa and the University of South Florida. Got that program really going. Then went to Oregon for a year, but has come back to Florida. The Bradenton native is now, of course, the head coach of Tallahassee. He joins Ahmad and I. Congratulations first on the job. Thank you very much. And if you don't mind telling the story a little bit again about the decision, how torn you were between Eugene, which is a great spot, and coming back to Florida. Uh, it was tough, you know. Uh Rob Mullins gave me an opportunity to go to Oregon and, and, and be a Power 5 coach, and everything was on the up and up. You know, we was recruiting well. We, we got the program back, went in, and uh, made great relationships uh, with, with our alumni, our boosters, and, and more importantly, with our players. And, and, and that was tough because those young men, um, they, they bought into everything we did there and everything we asked them to, to do, and, uh, and that helped with the turnaround. So it was, it was really tough uh, making that decision, but it was one of those decisions, you know, like I say, it was, it was one of those things, like I say, it was a dream job, you yeah. know, and, and so it was tough from that standpoint. Well, certainly you've had a hectic last few weeks. How would you describe it? Um, it's, it's been fun. You know, now it's the fourth time taking over a program. He's kind of used to it a little bit, <laughs> uh, the challenges that, that comes with it. And um, it's been fun. You know, the people in, in Tallahassee are really excited, you know, and you go out recruiting, players are excited. And, um, you get a lot of phone calls from coaches, so um, it's just part of the, the challenge. Coach, when you have a blue blood program like Florida State, I always tell people like myself going to Texas, you don't choose those places, those places choose you. And why Florida State, and was it the only job you would have left Eugene for the to take a head coaching down. opportunity? It was. Uh, Florida State's always been um, that dream job for me. Um, as a kid, I always wanted to play at Florida State. Uh, wasn't good enough. I wish Coach Ballard <laughs> yeah. would have recruited me there and probably would have had another national championship. But uh, yeah. uh, it's been that dream job. Some of you have been working really hard to get to that point. And, and not in a million years I thought it would happen right now, you know. And, and, yes, this was the only job I would have left Eugene for. You know, had a great thing going there in Eugene. Great, like some great people. Uh, great administration and, uh, and having a relationship with Phil Knight was, was, was big time. Yeah, we have an injury, uh, unfortunately, a the Seminole. It's Izzo who is shaken up on the play. The Seminoles have moved down into Southern Miss territory. As you looked over this team, how do you, you know, what do you look at? What have you seen so far as you have been able to, to watch some practices for the bowl prep and all the recruiting and that? What have you seen out of this group? Um, it's, it's a lot of talent out there, you know, and uh, being able to watch practice was, was pretty cool to see. And guys flying around, I think Odell has done a great job of keeping the team together, considering all the things they've been through the last couple of weeks. And uh, for them to fight like they did at the end to get bowl eligible said a lot about this football team. And, and just from the observation of, of being now in Tallahassee, what have you seen, and and is this still the job that you expected it to be once you arrived? It is. You know, um, we have great players. Um, I told one of my buddies the other day, um, there's some, some toys out there to work with. Now. <laughs> you know, uh, great players. We just got to get back to uh, playing team football, you know, and playing with passion and, and being excited about and right on cue, Willie, as soon as you said that, we just saw Akers make a play that very few people can do. He was absolutely trapped behind the line and is able to burst into the clear for a 32-yard gain. Yeah, the, this is an important opportunity for you, obviously. You've had other chances to build up. I don't know if you ever walked into a place with those kind of toys before. I mean, Oregon maybe. But still, I mean, you've got Akers, you've got some guys coming back. How much salesmanship have you done with the current players? Um, for me personally, just trying to get to know those guys, you know, um, and that's going to take some time for me to get to know each and every last one of them. But um, getting to know them, them getting to know me is, is really key um, for us all coming together. And I think for a football team, that's one thing we have to do is come together. And I would love to see these guys play for each other. And, and I think once we see that, we'll see something special in this football team again. And Ahmad and I are talking with Florida State's new head coach, Willie Taggart. Yeah, speaking of coming together, assimilating, uh, assembling your staff is is the next big project for you. I heard you say early in the week you will not rush this process. You want to make sure you get the right guys. How's that process coming along, Oh, coach? it's going well. Like I said, um, getting a lot of phone calls, a lot of interest <laughs> in being here. But it's, it's so important that we get the right fit, you know, for what we want to do at Florida State. And uh, like I said, I got a lot of options. I just want to get the right guys in there um, to help us uh, lead these young men. Well, there was a drop in the end zone, a receiver wide open, unable to hang on to it. A move you made, Odell Higgins is going to stay. He is a Florida State guy through and through. What was behind that decision? Well, I just watched Odell over the last couple of weeks with the football team and how much respect those players have for him and his passion for Florida State is, um, has been 
big time and been on the road with him recruiting. Um, he does a great job recruiting. He's great in the home, but it's easy to be great at that when you're passionate about something and you believe in something. And um, he's, he's Florida, th Florida State through and through. And uh, something that, again, when I talk about fit, he's the kind of guy I want on his football team. Uh, for all the Florida State fans that are watching this game right now, many of them are expecting offensive changes. What can they expect to see from your offense with you as the head coach? Um, I, don't, I don't think they'll see a huddle again. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, and I think you'll see the tempo put, uh, pick up a little more than, than what you've, you've seen here lately. But um, again, we're going to try to get our guys in space and let these athletes do what they do and, and uh, try to score a lot of points. We like explosive plays and, and trying to have a lot of explosive plays in this offense. Right, we have a 29 yard field goal attempt coming up here for Aguayo. Made 15 of his last 16 field goals. Haven't had kicked that many lately, actually. Only one since November 4th. The Syracuse game. And this one is true. So the Seminoles expand their lead to 16 to 6. We want to thank you, Willie, very much for your time. We want to Indeed. wish you the very best in Tallahassee with the Seminoles. And I know everybody in Seminole Nation is very, very excited. Uh, thank you guys very much for having me on. And I uh, hope to see you in Tallahassee one day. Love to do Indeed. it. Indeed. Knowles up by 10. We'll return to Shreveport in a moment. Guys that was up for the Heisman conversation and, mm -hmm. and until his team had some late losses, I thought he's done a fantastic job of leading the Buckeyes this season. And that one will be a ton of fun on Friday night. This one's been very interesting. Florida State's had three possessions. They've scored three times. Lead it by 10. This will be Parks, a couple of yards deep in the end zone. He wants to go. Stumbled a bit, and that's going to cost him. So instead of perhaps the 25-yard line, the Seminoles cover it beautifully, and out to the 13 for Quadre Griggs and the offense for Southern Miss. Griggs, 5 of 8 for 19 yards, and that is all of the passing game. He actually has more rush yards than passing yards. And I think that's where he's going to be more successful, is utilizing his feet and if he can continue to put pressure on this Florida State defense and make them account for him, as I've said earlier in the broadcast, I think that's the best way to defeat the Seminoles defense. He's come in off a hot hand. His last three games, he had seven touchdown passes, no interceptions, and completed over 60% of his passes. They take Edo Smith and split him out to the right side with two other receivers, so an empty set here for Griggs. He'll keep it. As is so often the case with empty sets and running quarterbacks, they keep the football. And Demarcus Christmas, number 90, clogged up that lane, maybe a yard. A great recognition from the defensive line for Florida State. And I'm sure they were communicating that along the line of scrimmage when you go into that empty look and you move Edo Smith out wide where he's very comfortable and comparable to a wide receiver in terms of what he can do on the edges. This is Smith. Notice how he follows the blocker and gets outside the 20 to the 21. It'll be third down and two coming up. Smith just literally put his hand on the back of the blocker to be guided through the hole. Yeah, and that's a, that's one to follow. Drake Dorbeck, 6'6", 320 pounds from Vicksburg, Mississippi. I'd follow that guy too and <laughs> Ito with his cutting abilities and and Roddy can tell you he's just one of those guys that's very special in making guys miss um, limiting the amount of space that you can attack and tackle Ito Smith an impressive prospect. Yeah even if you find him in the hole you're he's still liable to make you miss as they say he can make you miss in a phone booth. <laughs> if only there were phone booths anymore. Nothing on that play at all the Seminole defense rises up. And it'll be fourth down and two. Timeout and with training staff now for Florida State having to jog onto the field. That is number 18, Roderick Hoskins out of Orlando, a redshirt senior, fighting to get to his feet. And he is able to get up, but he's going to need a little help to get toward that sideline. And looks like the punt unit out again. And again, another end of the wind punt for Everett. A great defensive series there from Florida State, particularly 
that defensive line that got stout there and it's going to give this Seminoles offense a great opportunity to steal some field position and have an opportunity to strike from a short distance. Six minutes left in this half. A little bit of pressure. A lot of roll on this kick. Oh, look out there. Matthews faking his way to grabbing the football had uh, almost touched it, but it'll be at the 33 yard line. We like to call this the most wonderful time of the year, and we've got three more bowl games for you Thursday on ESPN. At 1 30 Eastern, Virginia and the Naval Academy in the Military Bowl, presented by Northrop Grumman. Then at 5:15, number 22, Virginia Tech squares off against number 19, Oklahoma State, in the Camping World Bowl. And then at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, the Valero Alamo Bowl, number 13, Stanford, number 15, TCU. All these games on the ESPN app. Bryce Love almost 2,000 yards this season coming into the game. One of my favorite players to watch, and one of the best memories was watching him battle during the Pac-12 title game through injuries to still play in that game and be effective. Blackman will take off and he hasn't been touched yet till he's finally shoved into a trunk at the 45 yard line. That's a gain of a dozen and a first down. Moore shoved him away. And notice quickly Odell Hagan's grabbing Blackman and just tell him, hey, relax, don't say anything, walk away. And yeah, with this long stride this kid has, it doesn't appear as though he's really moving that fast, but those long strides are eating up turf and grass. And as a defender, You've really got to gauge, you know, because tackling is a science. You've got to gauge, is a guy fast enough? Does he have moves? Does he use power? And Blackman's one of those more difficult players to determine how to tackle him and how fast he's actually going. Play action fake there. Blackman steps into a pass down the middle of the field and is tipped. Tavarius Moore got a hand on it, knocked it away. It'll be second down and 10. Great effort. They went max protect, wanting to take a shot downfield but the middle of the field safety doing an excellent job getting underneath this and making a play just in the nick of time that ball goes over the top coming from the backside actually to break up that pass well that's the very definition of the position that Moore plays free safety honorable mention at conference USA this year Moore, the leading tackler for Southern Miss Blackman in some trouble Scrambling right. A lot of contact, and I don't know who you call that on. Moore was locked up with Gavin. They both grabbed each other. And it's going to go against Southern Mississippi. Yeah, I'm going to sound like a defensive back here, but well, I think you let them play through this contact. Can you Pass help it? <laughs> Defense, number 19. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. First. And 10. Well, well, here's the predicament because this ball is underthrown. So immediately when the wide receiver comes back to make a play on the ball, are you supposed to just let him get back in position to catch the ball? And I thought there he turned around at the right time. That to me seemed like a pushing match that you could have allowed play through contact. I thought Moore was good in coverage on that play, good enough at least to not have been called for pass interference uh, after that penalty it does to the 39 yard line into USM territory Patrick on the carry bumps into his own man still fighting and he'll get a yard all on individual effort and they're going to say no gain they say his knee down to the 39 yard line Riley in there number nine on the stop and we talked to center Alec Eberly who's a bright young man the center for the Seminoles team and he talked about how early on this offensive line really struggled. You know, they had a hard time pass protecting. They had a hard time um, creating running lanes. And that this unit has tried to keep this team together despite um, everything that has happened surrounding this program. And that time there, uh, Southern Miss whipped them at the line of scrimmage and was in the, the running back's face. Blackman, straight keeper here, going to go left. And USM pretty quick on that one. There's Moore again. Maybe a yard. Yeah, Moore's got the right demeanor to play at the next level. The senior from Quitman, Mississippi, was my impact player for the game. He's very active, one of the top tacklers in the conference. Uh, but you see him here. He has no problem putting his nose in there, fitting up ball, fitting up ball carriers, and dragging them to the ground. Now a third long situation here. 
Uh, expect some movement, pre-snap movement from the Golden Eagles to confuse Blackman. He's in some trouble. Hit as he throws, coming back, and it's incomplete. 25-yard line, penalty marker down. Preliminary indication is on the Holdings. Nolans. Number 76, offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Now, fourth down is the 38-yard line. And the decision is to bring out the punter, Logan Tyler. Now, Ahmad, who could be joining Roddy Jones? What? My guy, the my favorite defensive back of all time. His too. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Primetime Deion Sanders is in the building. Roddy, I'm so jealous that you're going to get a chance to talk to perhaps the best defensive back of all time, in my opinion. And that will check up and then take a roll into the end zone for the touchback 20 yard line. So prime time joins Roddy Jones on the field. When we return to the walk ons independence bowl. One third water. It's cool. Welcome back to Shreveport, where I'm here with an absolute legend, the GOAT, Thank you. Deion Sanders. It. Is, it, is it cold enough out here for it's you? It's freezing. <laughs> it, it is freezing out here. I'm, I'm not joking. My son is up there in a the box chilling, texting me about how warm it is in the box up there. Now, I heard you were texting with Brett Favre. He was down in the sideline, yeah. but he's up in a box now, too, so you're the only one down sure here freezing. He and if I had known he was coming, we would have put a little suitable wager on the game. <laughs> You guys had a lot of great battles, you and Brett. Oh, what's your best memory of him? Obviously, he's a Southern Miss alum, but, but what's your best memory of him? Taking him shopping when he played for the Falcons. You know, I went shopping for him in the inner city. <laughs> that, that was hilarious. And I don't think he wore any of the clothing that I purchased for him. <laughs> now, now, I see you're around the program. You're around talking to I'm these back. guys. I'm back. What has the conversation been through this transition that you've had with some of these players? First of all, uh, uh, they're excited about Coach Taggart. Uh, Mr. Wilcox, the AD, has done a phenomenal job of putting a real true team together that has the heart for these kids and the heart for Florida State University. And these kids are excited. I mean, it's like the expectation. They know it's coming, and it's a new day here. Now, we're reporting that you're in early discussions about the possibility to come back and join Willie Taggart's Ooh. staff. What, what can you comment on that? You never know. I've been known to make big plays with these colors on. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> now, 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 you certainly did make a ton of big plays. I I'm sure you've been asked this throughout the years. What's your best memory in a Florida State uniform? Just my teammates, man. That freshman class I came in with, and, and Odell was my roommate. Odell Higgins was my roommate. And some of these guys that we share so much, uh, it, nothing that transpired on the field, but really off the field in Burt Reynolds Hall and those dorm rooms and the unity that we share. Now, we got a chance to talk to Coach Higgins yesterday, and he talked about getting back to Florida State football. You're one of the guys that helped set what Florida State football is. What does that mean to you? Uh, just, just the work ethic, the knowledge of the game, and then you have fun. Some kind of way they got it mix, mix, mixed up. They try to have fun, and they don't understand the work ethic and the knowledge of the game. We got to get back to the basics. Absolutely. It looks like you guys just recovered a fumble, so you may be good luck for this Florida State team. I don't believe in luck, but I believe in hard work. And Coach Saget is awesome. I'm there behind him 100% of the way, and I'm happy to be back. Well, Dion, thank you for your time. Thank we appreciate you. it. God bless you. Hey, Brett, you owe me, man. <laughs> well, you're not kidding about a substantial wager from those two cats. The fumble was forced by Stanford Samuels III, only a freshman, yeah, and so recovered much. by A.J. Westbrook, two Floridians, one from the south, one from Central East in Daytona Beach. Coming up for this play. Watch how aggressive he is in his tackling. And the one thing you want to do, when I teach tackling, I teach you want to gather your feet, you want to close down that separation, and then you want to strike. And he did it perfectly well. Um, the young man coming up, making a big hit, and a very important takeaway for the Seminoles. High formation. Don't think we'll see many of those with Billy Taggart around next season. Cam Akers will run it for, oh my! He snuck out of 
there. I was looking at the officials starting to mark him down at the 22, but Akers squirted away for four more to get to the 18. That's a gain of nearly eight. Yeah, and, and we got a chance to, uh, when we talked to Jacquez yesterday about Cam Akers, he said this young man came in and was relying a lot on his talent when he originally arrived on campus. But since that time, he's running with more purpose. He's more forceful. And he's a kid that, despite having juke moves, can run you over when he needs to, and he just showed you there. Well, Blackman got hit right around the head. He's going to have to take off. And Blackman showing some great running ability, having to ad-lib there before Booth brings him down. Short in the first down. It'll be third and two coming up, and now we have a USM player shaking up. That Xavier Thigpen, their tall redshirt senior, second team all-conference USA defensive end. And he's getting up to his knees. That's a good sign, and up fairly quickly. While we have a moment, let's check in with Chris Cotter in studio for the first time today. Chris. Yeah, I think they could turn out the lights in New Orleans. Alabama dark. fans would find their way around there in the dark. They know that territory very, very well. <laughs> Indeed. We're going to have a timeout called here by the Golden Eagles. That's their second they've used in the Southern half, miss. leaving them with one. Their second. It will run Clock at 2.07, and we're looking at third down and two. So a critical play here. Yes, it is. Yeah, Florida State has had great success on offense. So I asked you at the top of the show, Ahmad, about the focus of Florida State. What do you think of it now as we approach halftime? Well, they seem locked in, and, and right now they are suffocating the Golden Eagles. Well, tonight, after the Texas Bowl on ESPN, you are not going to want to miss SportsCenter for an exclusive conversation with a man we just heard about, Nick Saban. Now, look at how Kevin Durant has taken another leap forward for the Warriors and why Villanova has the ranking but not the respect. If you watch the play, you'd respect him. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> all that and more on SportsCenter with Nicole Briscoe and Neil Everett, 12.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Yeah, Villanova, they're good. <laughs> There's your headline right there. <laughs> All you need to say to that. Well, I'll be curious to see that later and see how they're not getting respect because they ought to be. I think they're just jealous of Jay Wright and you apparently dress at the same tailor. <laughs> That's all they're jealous. <laughs> Third and two. Oh, boy. Patrick is the tailback here. Play action fake to him. He stays in the block and does a nice job. There's the throw to the tight end Izzo, and he'll get the first down at the 10-yard line. And Patrick just adding that NFL resume that time as a blocker. Yeah, and um, that's what you want to do. Show teams that you can pass protect, keeping your quarterback clean in the pocket. And Blackman has one of those elongated throwing motions. You saw it there. Um, you'd like to see him hasten that up at times to be able to get the ball out in the flat and make those short throws, but a good connection there to his tight end Izzo. They bring in the fullback, Neighbors, number 32. He'll swing out of the backfield and throw to the end zone. Caught touchdown. 23 straight red zone scores for the Knowles, and Tate with the grab. A complete mismatch in the red zone. If you are going to go man to man with Tate at 6'5", 225 pounds, that time there he wasn't even covered. But when you do, it's not a good matchup for the defense because of his size, his leaping ability, and his ab ability to also attack the football in the air and haul in those catches. Another big red zone play from Tate. Well, that is two touchdowns for Tate. Three touchdown passes by Blackman. And PATs have been unintentionally exciting today, but that one was drilled down the gut by Aguayo. So Florida State is on an offensive roll right now. And if you wondered if they were going to take this game seriously, the answer is clearly yes. That was just an outstanding route. Beats him inside, catches the defensive back on his heel, and Blackman putting the ball on the money. Looked at him the entire time. No surprise that he went to Tate in the red zone. Well, the other thing is, although Blackman once or twice has been chased from the pocket, he has had time. We see Tate's numbers so far. We have a minute and 33 to go in this half. So Southern Mississippi now forced to deal from the bottom of the deck here. They are struggling to move the football with some consistency. 
as they're running into the kind of speed that Florida State brings. <laughs> Isaiah Jones now joins Edo Smith at the goal line or thereabouts for the kickoff. Blackman, by the way, has already tied his career high for most touchdown passes in the game. He tossed three against Delaware State in a blowout win for Florida State. This will be Jones, and he'll take a knee. And we have an FSU player shaken up and limping off the field under his own power and can't quite get there. And it was right when the whistle blew. He made a, a Time out contact with two. That's Emmett Rice who is shaken up. He had a huge collision with two Southern Methodist, excuse me, Southern Mississippi players. And you could tell right away that something wasn't right. Out of Miami Gardens, that's actually where the University of Miami plays their home games at uh, Hard Rock Stadium. <sighs> Went to Norland High. It's a great school down there in South Florida. So here's this big collision. And you see he ends up taking out two. And that was, and it looks like possibly he collided, that it was knee on knee there. And that's, you know, that's full speed contact. So hopefully. Uh, Emmett will be able to return to this game. <laughs> that turf always feels a little colder when you're hurt. <laughs> oh, it does. <laughs> and he needs a little bit of help from his mates to get off and the field, and that's uh, can't put any weight on that just yet. So a quandary for Quadre, Griggs, and the USM offense. They only have one timeout, 93 seconds left in the half. A little pitch to Adams. Adams trying to get to the corner, but running wide against these guys is tricky. Jacob Pugh, who scored a touchdown against the Gators in Gainesville earlier this year on a fumble return for a touchdown. Yeah, outstanding team speed for the Seminoles and Southern Miss has to get going after their first drive 63 total yards and a touchdown despite penalties for the Seminoles giving up that drive last four possessions 50 yards three punts one fumble they go to the ground again and Burns will make the stop gain a couple there it'll be third down I thought there might be Florida State trying to get greedy here and use some timeouts and try to get the ball back they have elected not to do that. Now, if Willie was on the sideline, I'm pretty sure you'd get a timeout, especially with that <laughs> quick strike offense and their ability to take shots downfield. Well, they may get the ball back with just a few seconds remaining. Let's see what happens on this third down play. Griggs throws underneath the coverage and a nice cutback there by Jalen Adams. To get the first down, a freshman from Adamsville, Alabama, that temporarily stops the clock with 25 seconds to go. And USM now playing quickly. Go to Ito Smith. Boy, I love his patience, Ahmad. Yeah. Love his patience. And we're going to get a timeout used here, and the last one for the Golden Eagles. So if so you're just sitting down, their last timeout. let's take you through what It'll we've had already seconds. so far in this Walk-On's Independence Bowl. And believe it or not, we're going to show you a roughing the punter penalty because it kept the drive alive. And that led to this touchdown by Quadre Griggs. The redshirt junior wins the foot race to the corner, but Ahmad after that has been all Florida State. Yeah, Blackman got going, and right now he is ripping this Golden Eagles defense apart. 10 of 16, 137 yards, three touchdowns. He's put the ball in safe locations. He's also utilized his feet today, rushing for 27 yards. And it's been the difference. Um, he has been the difference with this offense scoring on consecutive drives and now leading convincingly over Southern Miss. And by the way, remember we showed you the beginning. Florida State had not won a game this season when the opponent scored first. They are in a position to break that. 
They're 0 and 5 when the other team scores first. Briggs flushed in big trouble and he'll just throw it away. He was outside the box and he got it past the line of scrimmage and he was being chased by Jacob Hugh, the senior from Dade City. The line scrimmage, and there was a receiver so in the 10 area. seconds remaining and third down and five. Yeah, after my quarterback just took a shot there, I, I, I'd be perfectly content with handing it off to our, our ultimate playmaker, Ito Smith, for a run here to pad his stats. And if you're this Southern Miss offense, they've got to come up with some answers in the locker room at halftime or this game could get out of hand. Well, the quarterback may take another shot. Pass is tipped. That'll stop the clock. Five seconds remaining. Brian Burns again. He is a great athlete. He was a good high school basketball player at American Heritage in Plantation, Florida, where Tavares McFadden also went there. Did not play basketball. Tavares, I believe, ran track there. So it's now fourth down and five, and no sign of the punting unit. Florida State in prevent defense, meaning defensive backs all the way back to the goal line. They're at the Shreveport Municipal Auditorium, I think, <laughs> where Elvis <laughs> left the building. <laughs> going to pitch it off to Smith. This is going to fatten his stats. And Smith is going to play this right to the last echo of the whistle. Great effort there, but he'll be short. And now a flag. The referee threw a flag. There's another flag that came in after that. We have had unsportsmanlike conduct penalties in this game already. So while some of the Seminoles are heading to the dressing room where it's a little bit warmer, let's see what our officiating crew has cooked up here on this final play of the half, or is it? There are one, two, three, four markers on the field. And the teams are heading to the dressing rooms. Leads us to believe we might have offsetting penalties. So did we get another flag? We did. Another flag was thrown. Somebody said something there. Greg Sujak, the referee. And now you can see Jay Hobson calling back his guys. Absolutely. After the play, the half is now over. Any fouls will be enforced on the second half kickoff. We have a dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 78 on the offense. That's his first. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 16 on the defense. That's his first. Those yardage penalties cancel. That's the end of the half. All right, there you have it. So Devin Ferrier and Jacob Pugh each have now a black mark in the book. The next unsportsmanlike conduct will get them ejected. You can see Ferrier pretty late with that. So Florida State, when they're ahead at halftime, six out of seven. Southern Miss batting 500 with our score 23 to six Florida State. Let's send you to the studio or Chris Cotter, Greg McElroy, and Gene Chizik are standing by. Gentlemen, it is all yours. And welcome back to the Walk On Enia. After a bit of a slow start, Florida State took control of the first half and leads Southern Mississippi 23 to 6. Along with Roddy Jones, we'll be hearing from him in just a moment. We've got Ahmad Brooks here. I'm Dave Lamont. We thank you for joining us. And Ahmad, we talked at the very top of the show. What about the focus for the Seminoles? And it looked a little shaky early, but what do you think now? Well, they've got the motivation, and they proved that. It was a rough start. They came out having some early jitters, penalties, but this team has certainly buttoned that up. I thought the performance from James Blackman, the young quarterback, really started to find his groove, and this defensive line for Florida State has taken over the ball game. We'll hear from Roddy in a moment. He's had a chance to chat with the coaching staff. And Florida State will get the football to start this second half with that 23 to 6 lead. We showed you that they are 6 and 1 when hitting the dressing room at the half with a lead. There were 
people wondered how their defense would play without Derwin James Matthew Thomas Josh Sweat all of whom who stepped away from the bowl to focus on NFL prep James very very highly regarded but the defense has been solid We've got Amir Rasul and Keith Gavin awaiting a kick and it's going to be out of bounds and this will be Florida State taking the football at the 35 yard line. Free kick, Free kick out of bounds. The ball will be placed at the 35 yard line. Now let's check in with Roddy. Yeah, Dave, I had a chance to catch up with Southern Miss head coach Jay Hobson at just after halftime. And he said that his message to his team was there's a lot more football left to play. He said little mistakes on each side have caused this deficit and against a team like Florida State you just can't make those mistakes he said coming out and getting a stop early will be the most important and then converting on third downs that's the biggest thing that he's looking for for his team in the second half. All right Roddy thank you I formation to open things up for FSU with Blackman under center top of the eye will be Jack West Patrick and he'll get it going behind his fullback neighbors and Patrick will fight to the 40 yard line for five second down and five coming up. And so it's it's interesting because we had Willie Taggart in here a lot earlier and we know this offense is not going to be like that do you had an eye formation it's almost like Odell Hagan's and his staff are going here take a good long last look at this <laughs> before the Taggart era begins you're 100 percent right. <laughs> Play action fake. Plenty of time now. Blackman on the run hits Patrick, who is open underneath. And Patrick again showing how hard it is for one person to bring him down. Gets to midfield for a gain of 10. That was an excellent decision from the young quarterback Blackman. He was looking for Keith Gavin over the top on a post route, but came back to his check down after maneuvering very well in the pocket. And those are the decisions that if he wants to win this job next year. He's going to have to play that well. We know that he's probably a better runner than Francois, but it'll be his passing ability that I think will give him the edge if he's going to win the job. Yeah, you know, I was just about to ask you about that too. We'll pick up a, a short gain there. Francois, very widely admired by his teammates. And yes. one thing I gathered from talking to people who watch Florida State and, and Francois in 2016 when he had 25 total touchdowns and the injury to your number one guy to your quarterback the most important position was certainly devastating and it put Blackman a true freshman in an awkward spot. He looks pretty smooth today and it, this battle is going to be an interesting one. Yeah I think it depends on on how much Willie wants his quarterback to run to be frank with you and uh, Francois is one of the toughest kids I've ever seen play the quarterback position. It'll be about two yards short of the first down. DJ Matthews with his first catch of the day. And you guys were talking about that quarterback situation that, that Florida State's going to have. It's a great situation to be in. And, and I think the, the thought is that DeAndre Francois will have a leg up because of his age. But James Blackman at this point has as much starting experience as DeAndre Francois does. So it'll be really interesting. I think, Ahmad, you made a great point about that last play where he climbs the pocket, checks down to his running back. That's the maturity that James Blackman has shown over the course of the season and that's the reason why Alec Eberly said that this guy came in with all kinds of swag it's just a maturity thing and he's done that over the course of this year. It's third and four they marked him out of bounds at the 44 and there you see Izzo right to the sticks and that will move the chains first down Seminoles. Uh, what I really like Roddy is his patience. I mean that time there he was looking for his tight end he let the play develop and threw it into a tight passing window. It's rare and I'm glad you brought up a point which is a fantastic point about him having as much experience now as Francois of uh, this year is going to strengthen this offense. Uh, it's, it's been a downturn obviously throwing a freshman out there but they will see major benefits come off of that next season. This will be Akers. Look at him bounce this outside in one beautiful motion for he is finally cut down at the 23 yard line. And he has just set the freshman rushing yards record held by Dalvin Cook, which was a thousand and eight, and Akers needed seventy nine. He now has a thousand and nineteen. Productive, you know, and just the, the time that you think this kid is an outside runner, 
he'll pop one up the middle with that same type of wiggle. He got a good block on the outside edge, but that that quickness and that burst and acceleration make him extremely difficult to tackle. Blackman incomplete. He gunned that one for Keith Gavin right around the goal line. It'll be incomplete. Second down and ten coming up. And again, Akers. 15 receptions, so they used him out of the backfield. And so now Akers has moved past Dalvin Cook. He had to go all the way back. What Dalvin Cook had to do was he broke a record that was at that time 23 years old. And Akers now has to avoid that sophomore slump. You know, for guys that play and have early success like Cam Akers, it's easy to sit back and think you've arrived. But if this young man keeps working with the same work ethic and discipline he has, his future is very bright. Make that 33 years old. That's how long ago. That time, however, the Golden Eagle defense was more than worthy as Curtis Michael, second team all conference USA, a senior from Bassfield, Mississippi, in there on the stop. It'll be third and ten. Lamont, you made a great point about Cam Akers in that sophomore slump. We saw it with Dalvin Cook when in his first year he split carries, and then in his second year he became the bell cow, and he was able to respond in a big way. Florida State's going to hope that Cam Akers does the same thing, depending on whether or not Jacquez Patrick decides to come back for a senior season or go to the NFL. Four out of six third downs for the Seminoles. Blackman has the time the pocket formed and they Ahmad was the pass late or the cut late uh, it, it looked that Gavin was a little sloppy coming out of his break there and, and, and that was a comeback route a deeper developing route great protection from the Seminoles offensive line and, and I thought the timing was good from Blackman he got it out a little earlier but it just appeared as though Keith Gavin couldn't gather his feet and come out clean of his break to make that catch so Ricky Aguayo will come on. Jared Jackson to hold this would be 39 yards and the breeze that we had earlier right now those little orange flags in the goalposts are pretty quiet. High snap. Very well handled by the holder Jackson and Aguayo is true. So Florida State building on their lead in 26 to 6. We'll see what Southern Mississippi can do when they get the football for the first time in this quarter. Team like Florida State, it, it really does give you the confidence needed to feel like you can play with anybody in the country. Jones and Smith back deep. Coming up, this will be Edo Smith. And this time he cannot make a miss. Great coverage by the Seminoles defensively. Rasul in there with the stop. So Florida State, the last five seasons, they have seen incredible highs. I mean, they had Jameis Winston win a Heisman Trophy in 2013 and a national championship, their first since 1999. Then they get to the playoff semifinals, but lost to Marcus Mariota in Oregon. Then they did all right, but they couldn't beat Clemson. Not many did in that stretch. And of course, this season, six and six, and a new head coach in Willie Taggart replacing the new coach at Texas A&M, Jimbo Fisher. And I, I think both Florida State and Fisher needed a change. And and you know, you hope it works out for Willie Taggart, and especially with the fertile recruiting base that he has, to be able to bring in some talent to operate that offense that he has. So here is Griggs, and his pass is batted down to the line of scrimmage and nearly intercepted. I think that was Demarcus Christmas collapsing the pocket there, number 90, who got a hand on that pass. It'll be second down, 10. Yeah, and you know it was shocking, even as a college football fan, when you saw the news come through that Jimbo was going to A&M. Well, there are some people that will tell you that that wasn't a big surprise as soon as Jimbo started to complain about things up there. That it started to frost a few people and, and rub them the wrong way. Whether that was his subconscious way of starting to grease the skids for his exit, or whether he just was upset about something and only he knows. And I think part of it, though, was the graphic we just saw, the amount of success that he's had at Florida State. But as we know, and myself having played at the University of Texas, the more success you have, 
typically now you've created expectations that are extremely difficult for you to meet. I, you know, Mac Brown, uh, one of our colleagues, knows it best. He came in, it was a struggling Texas program, you build it back, and now those those wins that you have, fans are expecting 10 wins a year, no matter your talent, no matter the downturn of the program. And so um, I was shocked for that reason, that Jimbo has had a major success, one of the, the top coaches in the country. It was a great get, I think, for, for Texas A&M, for sure. And I know there were some people that were displeased about how the exit went down here. Oh, at you can say that again, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And most importantly, these student athletes having to endure another coach coming in and getting used to Willie Tiger. Griggs, that's a tough throw into coverage, and it is incomplete. The coverage that time by number 14, Kyle Myers, who had a critical breakup earlier, trying to get it to Isaiah Jones. You know, the one player, guys, that has been taken out of the game plan, Corey Robertson, the fine receiver for the Golden Eagles, number 18, is just two catches for 15 yards. That's it. Well, they play aggressive man-to-man -man coverage here, and so Levante Taylor, who I believe is a young, bright, um, star from Virginia Beach, Virginia. In addition to that, McFadden, who wasn't supposed to play, according to various reports, both of those guys were doing a nice job of getting his pads and making it difficult for him to get off the line of scrimmage. Everett into punt. Oh, they'll throw a fake, and this is going to work. This is going to be a first down and a whole lot more for Southern Mississippi. They needed a spark, and they throw it to Allen Fales Jr., who is a linebacker, and it's a trick. That succeeds. What a gutsy call. And a nice pass by Everett. From Jay Hobson. You know, this is not the area where you expect a, a fake, for sure. Normally in between both 20s, but it sets up perfectly. Executed to perfection. And now the Golden Eagles offense back out on the field, and that could be the momentum they need to get things going after being stagnant and held to a few yards since their opening drive where they were able to punch one in for a score. Nito Smith, T-Rod Daniels in the backfield for Griggs. His throw, and McFadden almost picked it. They went to Robertson, and maybe part of the problem is that McFadden has just become Robertson's not BFF today. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure there's a lot of jaw jacking going on from McFadden. He plays the position with the right demeanor. And he's still developing in his skill set. I think at times when you watch him on film as an NFL prospect, his aggression can get him into trouble, but it's also his strength. And so he's still battling on when to be aware and when to have aggression at the line of scrimmage, but a fine play from number four. Delay, no chance, absolutely no chance. Derek Noddy, a big senior from Virginia Beach, 6'1", all of 3'10", stuffing that. I love these kids. I, I love yeah. them. Yeah, I mean, and in, in talking to the staff here at Florida State, he's a player that plays the zero technique right over the center, but he's ideal for a three technique or a shade at the next level. Very stout run stopper, built low to the ground, great center of gravity, and he's playing in his last game as a Florida State Seminole. He'll be missed, a, uh, a, a leader but in a quiet way. Now Griggs in some trouble here, stumbled a bit, goes back and just missed the receiver who would have had a first down. Robertson had that pass connected. He was right at the first down marker at the 45-yard line. So I don't know if they have another fake plan here for Zach Everett. But you know, it's funny. That 25-yard gain is the longest pass play Southern Miss has had today. Well, that that's, explains why you've only got six points for sure. And you've got to give credit to Florida State's defense. After that first drive and some costly penalties on special teams, they've come back out and they have played like their hair is on fire. A timeout called here by Florida State, and there's also a penalty marker now, but I believe Florida State, their first. So we'll be picking up that flag. It, it looks like Florida State beating timeout. that by getting the timeout called. They have two left for the rest of this game. Saturday on ESPN, Bull Mania is going to continue with a couple of more games at 4 Eastern. It's the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. It's number 11, Washington. Takes on Saquon Barkley and number 9, Penn State. Then at 8, number 6, Wisconsin battles number 10, Miami in the Capital One Orange Bowl. And the Canes are playing at their home stadium, Hard Rock Stadium. So we'll see if that's going to be any kind of advantage for the U or not. Both games are available on the ESPN app. And Saquon Barkley. Didn't get the Heisman as many thought he would this year. But uh, Mel Kuyper's still a big fan. Yeah, I, I think I think a lot of teams are as well. If you look at what the impact 
that some of these running backs have had going in the NFL. When you look at Christian McCaffrey in Carolina, Leonard Fournette in Jacksonville, how can you not, if you're a team in the top five, think about taking Saquon Barkley? And he will be playing in that bowl game, unlike the two names that Roddy just mentioned who skipped the bowl games. Dave, don't. Looks like there. Right now, though, the party is if you're wearing garnet and gold. 8.05 to go in this third quarter. The Seminoles with the football again. Jacques Patrick at the tailback. And the discussion we're about to start here it revolves around players who have decided, and this is a very recent trend, to sit out bowl games in order to protect their NFL status to avoid injury. We're going to go Patrick here, and he's going to get double teamed for a one yard pickup. So, Ahmad, I'll start with you. We saw Christian McCaffrey skip the Sun Bowl last year. Top 10 pick, by the way. Lennon Fournette, top four pick. They both set out their bowl games. We're not going to see Derwin James today for Florida State. He is a almost guaranteed first round pick. He's concerned about that, along with some other players, by the way, who are skipping it. So what do you think of this new trend? Well, let me preface it by saying, if you're a top 10 pick, I understand the potential of maybe you trying to preserve your body. That's a great catch coming back to the football there by DJ Matthews and a first down at the 41 yard line and, and to avoid the risk of injury. However, now with guys that aren't top 10 picks, I really have an axe to grind with them, partly because the ball game is all about coming out here, having a good time, um, wrapping up the season with your mates. The memories that are created at bowl games and I played in all four of them are some of the best moments of my life. That being said, I also think you can improve your draft status by playing. And I really have an issue with this. And so James, I can understand as James Blackman finds his tight end Izzo for another first down. I love the fact that this is possible now, but what I hate the most is that you also lose sight on the game in terms of NFL scouts. If your big players are not here, trust me, there were some guys in NFL scouts that did not come today because James wasn't playing. Just keep that in mind when you're one of those guys that has an opportunity, could step away from a ball game, because that's something more than anything that I really um, have a hard time understanding, especially considering the rookie salary cap now that has drastically limited the amount of salaries and money these kids can make in their first year as rookies. This is DJ Matthews as Blackman, who took a real shot on the previous play. Able to get off the completion for seven. Now, Derwin James has got a teammate, Josh Sweat, a junior defensive end who's not playing today. But there are others, a couple from Texas. Uh, Royce Freeman in Oregon, a senior running back, has decided to skip his bowl game. And, and Dave and Ahmad, you know, I, I, I kind of fall on the opposite side of this issue uh, as Ahmad. You know, I, I look at what these guys can potentially make at the next level. And even though there is a rookie wage scale now that limits compared to what uh, what it was back in the day when you were playing Ahmad, when you were coming out of Texas, it's still millions of dollars, which is more money than most of us will make in our entire lives. We're talking about the amount of money that can create generational wealth for these guys. So if you have 60 minutes from the end of your season until making those millions of dollars, I can't be mad at you whatsoever for protecting your body and protecting, honestly, the investment that you've made in your football career. So, you know, I, I certainly don't like it if it happens happens on a large scale and you see guys lower down start to do it but for those guys first second round picks hey man go get your money we expect everybody to treat this like a business except for the athletes so I, I support them uh, in their decision and the other thing you don't ever see is you don't see the guys in the playoff games doing it yeah you, know, of course you see not. guys in the bowl games that are not in that playoff echelon and again it's not a majority of these draft eligible players are the good ones it's just a, a handful but it might turn into a trickle down and speaking of trickle down so if you're worried about an injury do you not drive a car i mean I so the point is is it's football are you kidding me right now this is gabe neighbors the fullback and he'll lose some yardage on that first and goal situation now it's going to be second and goal back at the 10 yard line and, and you know, I think the, the interesting thing about this whole trend is that it was started, quote unquote, by two guys, Christian McCaffrey and Leonard Fournette, who had legitimate injury concerns last year going into the bowl game. And both these guys were banged up throughout the year. Both of them had the support of their coaches to sit out in order to get healthy for the for the combine and for the tests that they had to do. So I, I think people kind of forget about the fact that Fournette and McCaffrey both had injury issues last season. 
Last thing I'll mention about it, I also wonder the effect it has on your teammates, the ones who aren't going to be playing on Sundays, the guys who are still going through Absolutely. the extra practices and playing for the game. And that'll be down inside the five on the carry there by Jock West Patrick, who certainly is a mystery as to what his future is going to be. So that's the other thing I wonder. I mean, if you're a, you know, a backup guard, are you going to be resentful? Are you going to, you know, that I just wonder about that effect and how it might affect your team. Certainly not affecting Florida State today. Amon, you played with fir more first-round picks than I did, but but I played with a couple, and if they decided to skip the bowl game and go play, I, I think I would have understood because, again, they're steps away from millions. They've got some bulk in the backfield now, and Patrick so hard to bring down, and they can't do it until he gets in the end zone. They added... Frederick Jones from the defense, number 55, to lead the parade of blockers. Patrick, so tough. And Florida State has blown this game open. Well, well, here's a guy today that battled through some injuries this year. He came out, and we asked him. We said, why did you play today? He said, you know what, man? I just love playing ball. I am not going to miss an opportunity to play one more time with my guys and to be, out, and to be able to send this, team the right, send this team out the right way. I admire that type of courage and confidence in your ability to keep yourself from getting injured, but also the effort that comes along because he is an NFL prospect as well. Oh, well, that size. Oh, man, absolutely. Beast. Jacquez Patrick, you might see him on Sundays sooner rather than later. Only he knows the answer to that. That may be what's being looked at in there now. Roddy Jones is in the neighborhood keeping an eye on things for us. 33 unanswered points for the Seminoles. A couple of yards deep. This is Smith. 25-yard line is where he will be brought down. Seminoles have played very well on kick coverage. Be sure to see Star Wars, The Last Jedi, now playing in theaters and IMAX everywhere. And that's kind of what Jack West Patrick and Cam Akers have looked like rolling through defenses today. <laughs> no what doubt. you just saw there. Southern Miss has got to find their offense and find it very, very quickly. There is Jack West. I know people in the ACC are hoping that this young man decides <laughs> to take his talents to the NFL, but for those Seminole fans out there, they'd love to see him and Acres at it one more year together. So on the ground, it's Smith trying to bounce off tacklers. And is he ever? What a great run this is by Smith down the sideline and right around midfield. He has run out of bounds. That'll be a 24 yard gain and a tremendous run by Edo Smith. Yeah, this guy's patience, as you alluded to earlier, Dave. Watch him. He's as patient as a parent dealing with a toddler. <laughs> he just takes his time. He lets the play develop. His blocking in front of him develop. And Ito doing a fine job of getting to the outside edge and showing his acceleration and, and burst. Catch made there by Staggers. He is brought down immediately for one yard. Second down and nine. Ito Smith, 2,300-yard games in his career he's got 82 so far and again that is not the name on his birth certificate he's known as Romarius but a uh, someone in the family a relative thought he looked like the famed judge from the OJ Simpson trial Lancey though so that's who he came to know. amazing how things stick <laughs> I mean he was born in 1995 <laughs> and he's by the way completely okay with it That'll be a gain down to the 43 on the run there by Griggs, a redshirt junior from Greenwood, Mississippi. So it sets up third down and three. And Smith, a senior from Mobile, first team all-conference USA, owns a ton of records at Southern Mississippi. And in his career, those 2,300-yard career games ties him for third place, active with Nick Chubb. That's how good Edo Smith, but he, he really hangs with some prestigious football players in his career. He'll get the direct snap. Now they'll run a trick play. The throw back to the quarterback, Griggs. The throw came from Staggers, and Griggs was wide open on the near sideline. So the second time we've seen Southern Miss succeed with a trick play. 
Yeah, he tried to do, Griggs did, the, the def defense by coming out, pretending as though he was checking the playoff, and it was just a direct snap to Ito Smith, who came around, pitched it to the wide receiver. Well-designed play, executed the way you draw that thing up, and a big gain for the Golden Eagles. So a buck 20 remaining in this third quarter. Now back to Smith, again, playing off of the block, and it's a good one, too. Smith will get inside the 15 with another fine move. He was following Jerry Harris, and that seems like a pretty smart idea, and that's going to be another first down for USM. Yeah, that play is really working for them right now. Um, they're bringing an offensive lineman pulling from the backside, and he's just hiding in behind them and finding space and taking off at the right time to gain positive yardage. He is listed at 5'9", 193. Ahmad, is that going to be any kind of drawback for the pros? Not when you're running like that. <laughs> one on one. Breaking into the end zone. Pass McFadden for the touchdown. And Robertson gets away to make the grab for six. So Corey Robertson and Tavares McFadden have had their own game going on and Robertson gets the best of it this time as the swinging gate is set up by Southern Miss Florida State covering it. And now they close the gate. Parker Sean Field is out. He missed a PAT earlier today. Very surprising. He's an excellent kicker. Then he blasts that one straight and true. The 33 point run broken by that touchdown. Yeah, McFadden here, it appeared as though he was anticipating a back shoulder fade here. You watch him in the ISO, and he's going to turn over his left shoulder rather than turning over his right shoulder and pinning the wide receiver to the boundary that told me he was anticipating an underneath throw because you're taught if it's underneath you turn in that way with your your body into the wide receiver it's a deep throw you want to roll that head and do what's called a speed turn he wasn't able to do that there it was a good a good pass and thrown in a safe location but McFadden there not at his best and Corey Robertson makes him pay for his first touchdown of the ball game. And you're talking about one of the most improved players in the entire country Corey Robertson he had a good 2016 he has had a stellar 2017. And I wouldn't rule out an outside kick here. Southern Mississippi has shown the courage to try a trick play in there a fake punt deep in their own territory. So I wouldn't be at all shocked here. Bourgeois tries something short. And there it is. And it's caught by Florida State. There's a flag down. Might be an offside here. It was caught by Carlos Becker the third. And for half a blink, I thought he might take it all the way. Dave, are you listening in on Southern Miss headset or what, man? <laughs> I, I, I kind of thought it was an asinine call, and they went for it. Oh well, boy. a lot of people have said that before. <laughs> I'm Offside, number three on the kicking team. The five-yard penalty will be assessed from the end of the run, first and ten. And they're usually right. <laughs> I don't really like the timing of this, uh, especially since your offense is finally scoring, but I also understand, too, that this offense has struggled getting going, and you see it here clearly offsides and that's unfortunate however for Florida State now you've got a short field um, you would imagine at this point in the ball game Florida State will continue to hand it off to their running backs Cam Akers 11 carries 88 yards averaging over eight or eight right at eight yards a pop um, Jacquez Patrick 14 carries 57 yards averaging over four with a touchdown and they have been your workhorses today I think you go back to them and perhaps surprise them by getting Blackman involved in the running game as well. Well, the visit to the medical tent was a productive one for Blackman. He fires the pass and Izzo with another grab. He takes some shots, but he continues to keep getting up. That's a gain of six to the 24-yard line. Yeah, Dave, you mentioned that trip to the medical tent for James Blackman. No other quarterback even warmed up. I think he told those guys before he went in there 
that he was coming back out. There was no concern on this Florida State sideline at all about him returning to this game. Yeah, that is six targets and six catches for Izzo for 59 yards. Down to seven seconds. Will they snap it? Yeah, we'll have one more play in the quarter. The handoff to Akers. He'll bounce it outside. They were waiting for him, but he is very, very close and think he has the first down at the 20 yard line before the collision with Moore drove him out of bounds. Three quarters down in the books. Florida State undefeated in six games when leading or tied after the third quarter. And they're up by 20 here at the Walk Ons Independence Bowl in Shreveport. Here in Shreveport, 33 to 13. And the second quarter was the big one so far with the Seminoles putting up 16 nothing, and at one point had a 33 nothing run. And they are perfect this six-win season when taking the lead or being even after three quarters. And what about the job of this Florida State staff that mm -hmm. they've done? Despite Such as not it having is. the coaches they have, I think we counted up yesterday a total of eight coaches, eight, including graduate coach. assistants as well as the head coach. Yeah, and they're doing a fine job today of game planning. Blackman on the run in a little bit of trouble. His legs will get him out of there, and he's trying to get out of bounds before he absorbs any more contact, and he did. Picked up five there. Yeah, you've got a few holdovers. You've got some who left, uh, and then Willie Tiger bringing in Odell Hagens, bringing him back, which seems to me like an absolutely brilliant move and yeah. an easy decision to make. And yep. then we'll see what Willie Tiger does it. As he told us in the interview in the second quarter, he's not in a huge hurry, and his phone is ringing off the hook. <laughs> I bet. A little stretch play action here, and good job by the Golden Eagles defense to cut that down after about a half of a yard pickup. Ahmad, you talked about the job that this Florida State coaching staff has done game planning, but from a motivation standpoint, I mean, I, I played in a bowl game where I was richer, and I was a part of a, a Georgia Tech team at where Chan Gailey got fired after the last game of the year. Paul Johnson had been named head coach. John Tenuta was our interim coach. And, and I'm going to be honest, motivation was an issue for that team. This Florida State team has absolutely responded to everything that Odell Hagens has thrown out there, and motivation has not been an issue here today. Well, I announced that game, and yes, and you played Fresno State, too, which didn't help. To the end zone, catch made, touchdown, Auden Tate's third touchdown of the day. That is a season high for James Blackman with four touchdown passes. And that is also an Independence Bowl record. Wow, and he's going to the largest wide receiver on either roster. Auden Tate, 6'5", 225, can't say enough about his leaping ability, his ability to tack the football. And that time there had several inches on the defensive back and made him pay with perfect timing on his jump. Um, great coordination along the sideline. Oh, and the snap did not go well at all. There's marker down, however. Yeah, and Tate, as a 5'8", former cornerback for the University of Texas, these are the types of players you struggle defending. You've got to have great timing, mental toughness. This time here, Odd he is now wearing number 85. We had over 33,000 in attendance here today. This game really is a tradition in this city. They're very important to the folks of Shreveport. I must say, I, uh, the diet out here has been outstanding. It's been a while since I've been in the state of Louisiana, being oh. a former New Orleans Saint, and the crawfish etouffee was amazing. This is Isaiah Jones breaking a couple of tackles, and he gets outside the 30. They're going to say he was down at the 31 yard line. Yes, uh, I will take any assignments in Louisiana, <laughs> and I have to buy, uh, buy restaurants. Yes, yeah, no doubt. In Baton Rouge, you go here. In New Orleans, you go here. And, and when you're watching television, you go to Bowl Mania. With two more games on ESPN at 5:15 Eastern, Iowa and Boston College at Yankee Stadium in the New Era Pinstripe Bowl at 9 Eastern. 
I like this matchup. Texas and Missouri in the Academy Sports and Outdoors Texas Bowl. You can watch them on the app, and you can watch A.J. Dillon on the app, the hottest running back in college football. He has taken off, and yeah, you see it the last six regular season games. He's been the best in terms of yardage production and um, physical runner, uh, but also has an ability with his force to, to, to pop you for the big one. This is Robertson on a little look in there, and he'll pick up eight. He's starting to warm up a little bit with Quadre Griggs. Southern Miss in an interesting conference. This was the, the, the big story in Conference USA was Florida Atlantic with Lane Kiffin, who just got a 10-year deal, which very few people think he will stay for, but he's staying for a second year, which some people didn't even think he would do that. And they ended up dominating the conference after a slow start to their season. So they're the standard bearer at the moment in Conference USA. Nothing there. It'll be third down and a yard coming up. I can't say enough about this Florida State front and what they've been able to do. And the key for me um, in this ball game was dominant run defense. And, and they've done that. Um, they've given up 125 yards. However, they've stopped them in costly situations. And part of that has been the ability to build a wall there and to force these running backs to have to bounce things outside to pick up yardage. Three out of 11 on third downs today. Seminoles 37% on the season, and that's all they've allowed so far today. 24th in total defense, by the way. Mentioned that USM was 17th. They got to hurry and get the snap off here in two, and they do. On the ground, no, uh-uh, three of 12. Jalen Wilkerson, number 30, busted that play up. Once again, this defensive line, just individual efforts up front, winning their matchup. And that's what big time college football is all about. And when you can rely on the guy next to you to win his matchup, those are the teams that make the greatest runs. And, you know, this is a Florida State team that could be a force to be reckoned with as the Golden Eagles try to go for it on fourth down here. Um, with the right pieces coming back, this team could be back where we know them to be with a prominent record. They'll option it. Absolutely not. This is going to be a significant loss. And Stanford Samuels III, just a freshman out of Pembroke Pines in western Broward County, diagnosed and destroyed the play. I can tell you one thing he's not is scared. <laughs> We've seen him make a few plays today. He is fearless on the edge. He comes up, he hits, he tackles. A complete defensive back prospect. Three of this game, Nick Saban, Mike Gundy, Mark Rick, Frank Beamer, all of them. And by the way, you need to have your workout on to lift that trophy. And if you stay after the game and join Roddy Jones and everybody else, it will be the Capital <laughs> Post Game Trophy Ceremony immediately following the game. That will be on ESPN3, and our man Roddy will be your MC. JJ Cosentino comes in to play quarterback for FSU. And they'll stretch to the right with Patrick again. And it takes about seven in the black and yellow to bring him down. So Constantino out of Pennsylvania. 6-5-247. And that announcement made to the crowd here gets a roar from the Seminole fans. So James Blackman will finish with an Independence Bowl record four touchdown passes as Cam Akers now is at the running back spot. He'll get it. Playing off the blocks, he disappears at the 30-yard line. So we'll take a look back here, Ahmad, at James Blackman's day. A freshman quarterback, a record setter for this FSU team. Yeah, he started off a little nervous, and then he settled into his role, started finding his targets, dropping balls into tight coverage. And I thought what really got him started was his ability to extend plays and maneuver in the pocket. And Tate has been his favorite target today. But James Blackman, I think, really took a step forward today in finishing the season strong and making a serious move to this being a quarterback competition next year. Young man finishing the year the way you'd like to see a guy that's played early um, finish off the season with a good performance. Going to get a timeout here called by Florida State. That'll be number two for them, leaving one on the table with 9.55 remaining. Yeah, I think Blackman's performance, how he had to handle an immediate spotlight. I mean, your first 
college football action is against Alabama in the that's brutal that's, you know <laughs> in the hundredth game of the century yeah. we've had already in the century but you know what I mean a high high level stage and now with Francois who's here by the way and he'll be healthy and ready to go that battle will be won I think the entire college football nation will Test. be watching and they, you know they have different skill sets and and I'm, I'm not sure if Willie has any plans on playing them both but I could see two potential quarterbacks playing for this team next season especially when you have the depth that they have now two guys that are starters who have different skill sets but also have proven that they can play big in big moments. I think the, the model of a Willie Tiger quarterback was at South Florida Quentin Flowers. Absolutely. Who played a great year for Charlie yes. Strong and Charlie's first year in Tampa. Uh, that's the kind of guy that you're looking for and uh, maybe you won't get one quite that good but that's the type you want. What's Florida State you should. That good point. Cosentino got hit as he threw that. It'll be incomplete. How about that for the backup quarterback? He comes in and on his first action <laughs> throwing the football, he gets absolutely planted. And guys, we've mentioned it a couple times, but being down on the sideline, you can't mention enough. It is cold down here. <laughs> so this young man came off the bench and, and uh, welcome to the game, young man. Does it look like they're, they're still on the field, maybe going for it on fourth down? Yeah, it's, it's probably an awkward punt. You're at the 30 yard line. Let's see if Costantino can what he's going to be able to do here. Looking to throw again. He will. Gets it. And again, that's going to be really close for Amir Rasul. Really close. The chain guys are waiting for the signal for a first down or not. Yep, they're moving the chains. Is that the right call? That is so close. I don't know how you would be able to overturn that if it, the booth did buzz down or if somebody challenges this. Yeah, great point. Typically, when you rule a, a call that close, it's very hard to overturn. And the great design on that play. They sent their two outside wide receivers on double slants and just slid the running back out into the flat. Confuse the defense and force defenders to have to fight through traffic to defend the running back. Well, there is some arguing going on from the USM sideline, and finally the referee, Greg Sujak, came over. Early on the field was that the runner made the line to gain. The previous play is under review. And Greg Sujak, I think, was actually trying to put a little fire extinguisher on some of the mouths of the assistant coaches and finally talk over to the head man, Jay Hobson. And Hobson voiced his complaint quickly, and then the referee now and the booth will take a look at it again upstairs. Steve Ferjanic and Don Bondi are running the replay show. We'll take a look at it also. Again, is it strong enough evidence to overturn the call on the field of a first down? We have some other angles as well, which will help all of us with this decision. Scrimshire in pursuit. Well, as is so often the case, Ahmad, the guy who has the best look is the official who made the call. That doesn't always make him right either, but he had a very good look at where the football was. And knew exactly what the first down marker was. Again, the ruling is first down. And what makes it so difficult is that he's carrying it in his left hand. If he has that ball in his right hand, I don't even think we're discussing this here. He he falls forward, and it appeared as though it'd be a first down. Now you're looking back at perhaps that left elbow. What comes down first? Difficult call to make as the um, official and the referee is ready to make the call. After review, the ruling on the field stands that Florida State made a first down. And in replay lingo, that means we couldn't find the evidence to overturn it. Indeed. I love the reaction of Jay Hobson, who looked at the official who broke the news to him, and he goes, how? <laughs> That's simple. <laughs> and again, one more time. I mean, he, he knows he can't win the argument, but I don't blame him for continuing to go argue about it. 
So Cosentino has a fresh set of downs after replacing James Blackman on this drive. And the clock runs toward nine minutes. Rasul stays in at the tailback spot. We'll get the carry here. Cuts back and has about four to the 21-yard line before he is brought down. Well, the ACC had a down year from Florida State, but a good year from Miami. Clemson doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. They are lather, rinse, repeat right now. Yeah. And, and you know, and I, I'll, I'll be the first to say it. We were having a conversation last night, and we said, well, who's the best coach in college football? And typically, you run off Nick Saban without even thinking. And, and I, as I think about it, and if I had to choose who I take right now, it's Dabo Sweeney, the culture he's created. And with all due respect to the way that Nick coaches, it's hard to dispute his success rate. However, if you ask guys, I think people have more fun playing for a guy like Dabo Sweeney. Not much of a game there. Roddy, where do you land on this? I I'm with Ahmad, although with uh, with Clemson Bama three going on in the playoff, I, I may just toss it up in the air for those two to decide on the field. <laughs> it's like whoever wins that game <laughs> on January 1st uh, is the best coach in college football. But, but I think what Dabo Sweeney's done, building Clemson from what they were to what they are now, it it's been incredible. I think they've had eight straight 10 plus win seasons three straight trips to the playoff you said it Dave rent, uh, lather rinse repeat uh, is what they've got going on and the number of players that they have going to the NFL it's incredible what he's done there in Death Valley they'll have more that whole defensive front will get paid it looks like Costantino going for the end zone almost he tried to get it to Justin Motlow and Motlow did everything he could to try to make that grab it'll be fourth down not a bad throw. Mm -mm. I mean, he, he, I think he threw it in a in a good location um, with two trailing defenders under Motlow. He tried to lay out there and haul it in with one hand. Couldn't quite grab it. So that will bring Aguayo back out. This will be 39 yards for the sophomore. He has made 17 of his last 18 field goals. But PATs have been an adventure today. Good snap, good spot. Kick came out a little weird, but it's good. Not the prettiest kick of all time, but it's three more on the board for Florida State. 732 until FSU claims a beautiful trophy. He's welcome at my party anytime. Come on out, bud. <laughs> Helping him out, but they weren't styling like that cat. No way. My goodness. Here's Jones, study step, hesitation. This isn't going to work out well for him. Down to about the five yard line is all. Let's step aside for a moment from here and send it over to Chris Cotter. Chris, what's up? Yeah, we do. Actually, Chris, it's a little chilly here in Shreveport. And we're also going to be looking forward to seeing A.J. Dillon play for Boston College. Led the nation in rushing the last six games of the regular season. And just a great job by Steve Adazio. That program was down for a few years. And I think they've recaptured that toughness that Tom Coughlin and Tom O'Brien had in the B.C. days when nobody liked playing Boston College ever. Yeah, and, and earlier in the year when our crew had an opportunity to sit down and talk to him, you know, he knew they were on the brink of doing some big things. I don't think anybody walking out of there expected, though, the run that they ended up accomplishing at the latter part of the season. Briggs will keep the football. Florida State now going into the two and three deeps defensively, getting some youngsters a chance to get in some minutes. Yeah, Ahmad, you mentioned the fact that we saw Boston College and A.J. Dillon earlier this year. We also saw Akram Wadley, and so if, you, if you're a, a fan that likes to see great running back play and great line play, if you want to you nerd out on some line play, Iowa and Boston College, this is a game you need to watch. Now 
Out of the empty set, Griggs retreats to the end zone. Going to go long right here. Big battle for the football. And it ended up, it looked like the intended receiver broke up a potential interception. So it'll be third down. Jordan Mitchell was the intended receiver there, number 80. They're down seven. And with Boston College coming on, NC State had some highs and lows this year. North Carolina had a freaky, unfortunate, injury-filled year for them. Duke ends up with a winning record after winning their bowl game last night, and we have whistles and flags. Illegal snap, number 78, offense. Half the distance to the goal remains third down. And the two conferences represented today in this bowl game, Conference USA and the ACC, had 10 bowl-eligible teams and is the most of anybody in the country, any of the conferences. And a costly penalty there from Devin Ferrier, the all-conference center. Redshirt senior, this is it for him. He was a guard before this season. That's a nice pattern there being run by Adams, who takes off and is going to get the first down of the 16-yard line before he is cut down. Keeping the drive alive is a freshman from Adamsville, Alabama. So you'll have Griggs coming back. You'll lose Edo Smith. Corey Robertson is a redshirt junior, so you'll have a key part of your offense there. And Griggs brought down. Nice tackle in the 21-yard line. You've got some good depth at running back with Tez Parks and T-Rod Daniels. They'll be back for Jay Hobson. And in two years, he's put together a winning record. He'll go to 15 and 11 overall. But he has brought this Southern Miss program into some prominence again. And Edo Smith, I'm going to be rooting for him at the next level. I don't see how you can. He just really represents everything good about the sport. And as I mentioned earlier, I, I think him returning kicks today was was something that NFL scouts will look to. And, and when you're evaluating this young man as that dominant defensive line for Florida State swallows him up one more time, you start to, to figure out, well, where can I put this kid? You know, potentially with his hands out of the backfield, you immediately think third down back. But if he can become a reliable kick returner at the next level in addition to that, uh, you know, most teams like to carry, you know, three or four running backs. Yep. There could be a place for this young man. Um, he's been able to put enough good stuff on film, Dave, where I think he gets an opportunity to make somebody's team. He'll be invited in for camp, that's for sure. So it's fourth down and short. Oh, what a hit on Washington. That will be a turnover on downs. A brilliant tackle by Florida State's Carlos Becker III to deny Southern Miss a first down. Media timeout. from Pasadena and number one Clemson number four Alabama in the Sugar Bowl from the Superdome in New Orleans both games streaming live on the ESPN app an unofficial poll for the three of us we pick the underdogs <laughs> believe it or not these teams are the underdogs and real quick my thought on taking Oklahoma is Baker Mayfield yeah uh, the same goes for me and that's hard you know um, obviously them being our arch rivals but you know Baker Mayfield deserves everything he's gotten this year um, and I personally have seen him mature despite some of the um, off the field things that happened in the offseason some of the antics on the sideline and I, I, I think he is ready to put on a show for the college football playoff and because of that I think what we saw what Deshaun Watson was able to do a year ago 
I, I think Baker Mayfield is set for a very similar postseason um, for the Sooners. Of course, it'll be tough getting by a great Georgia team and Clemson, Alabama doing it one more time in their little playoff trilogy. Rasul trying to get to the edge. He has done that, and he'll get driven out of bounds. But after a first down, flag comes in at the eight yard line, and now he's going to move it to the 11 yard line. There's going to be a holding call here. Going to go against Florida State to wipe out the run in the first down. Holding number 82, offense. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run remains second down. So in their 36th consecutive bowl game, the Seminoles have wound up scoring 42 points. The last time they did that was nine years ago in Orlando when they put up 42 on Wisconsin. Odell Hagens was there as a coach. And he will remain with Florida State. Willie Taggart has brought him back. That was announced yesterday. A run to the right this time. Good blocking, and Rasul is brought down at the 15 yard line. That is really close. If to the first down, he might even have it. Sankster in there on the stop. Now for today's Capital One player of the game, it is Florida State quarterback James Blackman with an Independence Bowl record for touchdowns. Didn't turn the ball over, passed for 233, and even ran for 29. Yeah, 18 of 26, and there were a few times today where I thought the wide receivers even had a couple of drops, and um, you, you look at the performance that this young man had today, he really grew up and um, has steadily progressed as the year went on and I think today culminated in all of the Southern Miss success he's had time out throughout his young career. It will be a 30 second time. Time out called by the Golden Eagles. We show you James Blackman's day in pictures the freshman from Belle Glade Florida. Yeah really settled in started finding a rhythm. And um, I think the play calling was also suited to his skill set. They put him in situations where he could find those one on one matchups and then he really um, just started throwing the ball to Tate which that became a major difference in this ball game and now you see Hagen's hugging on the big fella and, and, and those two will be seeing plenty of each other of each other next year as Hagen's defensive lineman throughout practice will be trying to distract Blackman but right now all good. And, and how about James Blackman doing everything that he did today without two of his starting wide receivers, Nyquan Murray, a late right scratch, and then Ermin Lane deciding not to play in the bowl game as well. Auden Tate, obviously his favorite his favorite target today, the only starter and receiver that he played with today. And that should be a first down. Yep, it is. Cosentino, after the timeout called by USM, is able to shove aside the defenders just enough to get to the 15 yard line we're down to two and a half minutes remaining here in the walk-ons independence bowl don't forget on espn3 roddy will be hosting the beautiful trophy ceremony that will be given out to florida state you wonder what willie taggart thought of today obviously he's going to be happy but how much of his brain is already moving on to dealing with all the phone calls he's probably had during the game from potential coaches and texts and planning ahead for the changes he's going to make to this team that will take effect about the time that that trophy is handed out. Yeah, and 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 get used to seeing that type of point production from the Seminoles, 42 be, yeah. points, because this is an explosive offense. Uh, yeah, you heard them if you missed our interview with Coach Taggart earlier today. I said, what are some of the differences going to be? He said, we're not going to huddle. <laughs> and so the pace of play will certainly change for Florida State and as well as them trying to spread people out. Oftentimes when you watch Florida State now, they rarely put their wide receivers or guys outside of the numbers. Willie Taggart does a great job of using every inch of the field. He'll, he'll widen his wide receivers, which then thins out the box, forces people to go longer to defend. And I personally think that this offense, with the talent that's currently here, what they'll recruit, being in the state of Florida, I, I think he's got a great shot of, of having success. And again, we invite you to tune into ESPN3 for the post-game ceremony presented by Capital One immediately following our game.
And at this point, 50 seconds to go, third down and six. Straight ahead. And the handoff there to Colton Plant. It'll be fourth down. Clock was stopped on the field by the officials with 40 seconds to go. We do on the field is that the line of the game was not USM made. We have a timeout for an injured player on the defense. There is Coach Willie Taggart. Now he doesn't get the Gatorade, right? That's Hagen's. That, <laughs> no, this guy is in still in the line from our. Former colleague, rest in peace, Stuart Scott. This guy's as cool as the other side of the pillow. His demeanor, you can tell he's going to win over parents and recruits in the state of Florida. Very familiar with it. It's good to see the Southern Miss Golden Eagle get up, but. And he is actually talking to Rudy Rudiger, the original Rudy, who we got an opportunity last night, the crew, that's him to your left of your screen. We got a chance as a crew, Dave, myself, and Roddy, to actually talk to Rudy Rudiger about the experience, the making of the movie, and as a kid who grew up uh, on the watching Notre Dame, Kirk, wanting to go to Notre Dame, I can tell you right now, just play. meeting him, you could see why Southern his energy was so positive and uh, one of the best uh, uh, sports run movies run. of all time in Florida my book. State yeah. has elected and to we, take uh, we made sure everybody got a photo. I think they found Odell Higgins. The game and clock will while start. Jacket on is my a little signal. damp. That's a good kind of cold. <laughs> yeah, Rudy, very charismatic. Actually, did the coin toss before the game today here at the Independence Bowl. An emotional day for Odell Hagen. I think now he can finally feel the emotion, yeah. realizing he's got it. He's going to retire as interim coach with a 2 0 record and turn it over to Willie nice. Taggart. But you know what? He goes right back to his office. He doesn't have to move. He doesn't have to go anywhere. Doesn't have to uproot anything in his life. Yeah. And perhaps great success is ahead for Florida State under Willie Taggart. And certainly what an interesting offseason it's going to be in Tallahassee. Who will be the number one quarterback when we do this again in eight, nine months? That's going to be fascinating to watch. And for Southern Mississippi, a terrific season in